Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm going to use this Castle Art set of colored pencils. Look at them, they're just beautiful. And I like those little grippies on the end, and I've said this in previous videos where I reviewed the Castle Art. I like those grips. And I'm going to use Everyday Magic, and I just want to show you the really interesting binding. It's removable. You can choose a page, take it out, of course, color it, and then you can put it back together. So this is going to be uh, the binding for all my artist edition books, and people really seem to like it. See? And then you can put it back together in put it back together again for safekeeping. So what I'm going to do today is color a frog with the set of 120 pencils. Now here's something funny when, well, I don't know if it's funny, but I opened the set. I looked at the first tray. I looked at the second tray. I set the first tray in the top of the set and I literally only used two trays. So there was an entire other tray that I didn't even use. And you'll see this came out beautiful. So the Castle Art set is amazing for the price. I'll put all the links below. I thought it was a 72 set. It's actually a 120 set. And I only used two trays and still got these pretty results. So what we're going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I colored this frog. Now the Castle Art pencils don't have any names and I did make a chart and you can find that chart below. I did take the liberty of naming all the pencils in royal names and uh, you can you can see if you like them. I will make that available below also. So what I did first was take the lightest yellow in the set and color everywhere that I thought I would see yellow on the frog because I know there's going to be layers. Frogs seem, well, I think when you think of a frog or a toad, what pops in your head automatically is green. And if I only colored the frog with green, it wouldn't look as nice and dimensional. And not that I'm trying to make it look absolutely real, but I want it to look at least really cool. So like I said, I used the lightest yellow and then I went over the areas that I thought would be in a little bit of shadow with, a, I can't even say it's a darker yellow, but sort of like a wheat color. And then I took this um, spring green, just as almost a test and put it on the underbelly of the frog. And I really like the color. So I know I'm gonna go back to that color. So here I am back again with the yellow and at this point I have a couple of pencils in my hand like I always do so I can easily go back and forth. Now here's the first little part of the green on the frog and I really don't know what I'm going to be doing at, at this point. I, I don't want him to be all one solid color. I kind of wanted his belly to be sort of yellowish with maybe some green mixed in. And uh, I know I want his back to be green. And I know I also want some greens mixed in, but that's about it. I don't know how much detail I'm gonna add. And that's kind of how I do it. And I do wanna say this, you don't have to copy me exactly at all, because I'm kind of just winging this. And you can see I'm, uh, I, I think I'm sporadic at best at trying to describe what I'm doing because I get ideas and I go back and forth and I also go back and forth with the colors. So that being said, right now, I'm using the springish green in all the areas that I think are going to be greenish. Later on in the video, you'll see that I definitely add more detail because even though he's, he's not that big, He's an interesting little guy and he's sitting on a green lily pad. So I knew at some point as I was coloring this green, he's got to stand out somehow. 
And I could have made him a different kind of frog. I could have made him a dart frog or a tree frog or something, but he's not. He's sitting there in the water. So I had to, I had to figure out some way to make him stand out. So you'll see what happens later on. So right about here, I was kind of getting the idea, ah, maybe I can add some orange because some frogs have those bright orange eyes. Now, that's a little contrary because it's usually the tree frogs that have those bright, glowy red eyes. But you know what? It's coloring and we can do whatever we want. We make our own creations and make our own world. So this frog sitting on a lily pad has tree frog eyes or dart frog eyes. And I thought it made him actually look kind of cool. And I think that the frogs, that I think that the, the little frogs that would be in the trees, I think that the pupils would be either round or a little bit different, but it's too late now, so I just kind of went with it. Now that is an orangey red that I used at first, and I'm kind of going back and forth between that and a scarlet. Um, I wanted to put some of that orange on his underbelly and on his feet because I thought, like I said, he's gonna be sitting on that lily pad and there's gotta be a way to make him stand out a bit other than a very dark shadow. I mean, I guess I could do that, but I wanted other colors to make him stand out also. I'm also using that orange to sort of divide his fingers. If you spread your fingers out, you can see the slight webbing. Well, he's got those too and um, I just used the orange to create that illusion on this picture. Now I'm taking a darker green and going over the top of the springish green. And uh, I'm putting that color right now where, not that he would necessarily be in the shadows, but it wouldn't be in as much sunlight. So those areas, you know, the underneath of his arm, the underneath of his, or, is it arm or leg? I am not quite sure. Those would be darker, darker green. And then the under under part would definitely be in the shadows and I'll even use a darker green later on. Being a little bit careful around little button fairies fingers because those are tiny details and I don't wanna get green on there because it would be very hard to erase. So now I'm going over areas that I think would be a little bit darker and might possibly have a little bit more detail. Not that he's gonna have warts necessarily, but he might look like he just hopped out of the water. And later on, I'll add some shine. And I also wanna point out at this point this frog does not look good right now. In fact, he looks pretty bad. Uh, I didn't really color super neatly to begin with. I, I sort of just filled in the area that I wanted to see green or yellow. It's not very neat and I, my, my whole point is that's perfectly okay. Sometimes I like it when it's not perfect, when it's slightly scratchy or the detail doesn't work out exactly like you think it's going to because it creates something that you might not even have had in your head. So don't be, don't be too hard on yourself because you never know if even the mistakes you make could enhance what you're coloring. Now that being said, yes, I do have some idea in my head to a point because certain colors are a little bit hard to cover over. If I started to make this frog, let's say brown, and then I changed my mind and I wanted to make him spring green, it would almost be too late to make him truly spring green because it would get muddied up. So. That's what I mean. It, if those kind of things, it, it's probably good to have some kind of idea what you want them to look like in the beginning. 
Sorry about the road work in the background. Now I'm taking an even darker green. This I would probably call like a forest green and I'm adding, uh, I would say, the details of the texture of his skin with this. And as you can see, the darker colors add depth and make the image stand out. Um, which is sort of contrary because dark colors in a picture have a tendency to make that area go to the background or it seems like that's in the shadows. But if there's not enough dark in an image and all of the colors and the shadows and the shades are sort of in the same range, nothing really stands out. So it's important to use a variety of lights and darks. So if I colored all of this frog very lightly and the background, he really wouldn't stand out too much. So I'm adding a bright orange on his feet, around his toes, and on certain areas. Now there are certain areas on him that are going to stay very light. His underbelly is light and there's going to be some areas on the surface of his skin that are going to be light that will indicate a reflection. So yeah, adding depth and dimension definitely helps your image stand out. Oh, and if I colored the lily pad, let's say I could even use the same kind of greens but I would make a dark area underneath the frog. So this would make, this would differentiate the frog from the lily pad and make him look like he's more in the forefront and standing out. Now I'm taking that lighter green again and I'm going over some of the darker areas to see what it looks like blended together. And as you can see, I like it, so, so I keep on doing it. And you know what? That's another thing I wanted to tell you at the beginning of, of this video, and I keep forgetting. I'm distracting myself. I do a lot of experiments when I color, as, as I'm coloring. I don't automatically know what's going to look good or what's going to look bad. So I might take a color and like do a little tiny area next to another color or um, color the back of something or the underneath of something um, just to get an idea because I don't have like an, an endless resource in my head that automatically says, oh, that's going to look good. I just do these little experiments and see how it works. And I try to give you tips and hints of what I think works when I'm coloring, but I never try to say, oh, you have to do it this way uh, or you have to do it another way. I just, like I try to say what works for me, but I, I would say the experiment, in, whoops, that was me sharpening. I would say that the experiment thing is a good idea. And if you just, you know, do little tiny areas and so you can tell what looks nice on the on the picture that you're already drawing so you don't like go right in there and start coloring really hard um, I think that I think that works out well for me so it might work out well for you too now in this section I speeded it up a little bit because I'm going over the green with an even lighter spring green to not quite burnish it but to see how it looks all blended together and I'm I'm really starting to like the way it looks a little bit more you can see that as I keep going it's looking better and better with all the different layers it's it's starting to come together and it just doesn't look like um, scratchy colored pencils it's it's actually starting to look like the skin of a frog and I am going in certain areas um, and just making it a little bit darker once again I'm going back and forth I even used a blue a, a pretty dark blue 
to add some dimension to the shadows too. I like adding a blue or a purple um, to make the shadows look uh, more alive. It, some, sometimes if you use black, it sort of makes it look flat. You know, even if you're outside in the summer, a lot of the shadows look blue um, or aqua. They're gorgeous. I'm going in now with some more of that orange red because eventually I will be coloring that lily pad and I want his feet to stand out and I want his little nose to stand out. And I want him to look vibrant and interesting. So once again, back and forth. At this point, I've only probably used eight colors. Now I'm going in with like a, a it's like a sepia tone. And I wanted to add not quite a stripe on his back, but an area on his back that looked a little bit deeper because somewhere in my head, I kind of felt like I remembered that to be, and I ended up liking it. Also, these pencils, once again, I don't know how they do this. The, this set is just great for the price. I am going to put the link below, but I have nothing to complain about. I could compare this castle art set to any so-called amazing set of colored pencils, and I see no flaws here. They hold a point. As you can see, I've done this whole thing without anything cracking. I've done layer upon layer. There's really no wax buildup. The colors are vibrant. So, yeah, if, if anybody has a question about castle art, they're phenomenal. I'm adding some of this same sepia tone to the shadow areas on his feet. And I'm, I just like the way it's coming out. The colors are beautiful. Oh, another thing. I don't really worry too much. Oh, let me interrupt myself. I even went in with a brighter red because at first I was trying to, I was trying to leave highlight areas. Then I changed my mind because I figured I can always go back in later with a Posca pen. So I went even brighter with the red and I really liked it. I didn't use any black in any shadow areas on this frog. I used browns, I used blues. I even used oranges and reds, but no, no black. I just wanted to leave it as vibrant as possible. You just saw me putting a little, a little bit of detail, some, some possible warts, some speckles, some just details to make his skin look a little bit more realistic. Now I'm going over the outside with a lighter color to sort of diffuse the, the outside line. Oh, and this is what I was going to say before. Uh, I don't worry too much about staying inside the lines. I, I, I know we still sort of have that in our heads since we were kids. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm going all over the place and going crazy here, but on the feet, you can see that I completely went outside the lines and I did it on purpose because those little tiny toes are tiny. So uh, it would, it, it adds more detail, it adds more dimension, and I'm gonna color the lily pad. And I, th I just felt like those feet would vanish if they were just so thin. So I took the orange and I went outside the lines and I will go outside the orange when I color the lily pad. Now I'm taking the yellow and I'm blending everything in rather than using a clear or a no color uh, blender 
I decided to use the yellow because it would make him even look more vibrant. I'm going back in with some shadowy blue to separate certain areas of him from other areas and from the lily pad when I do color it in another video. I have to say I really enjoyed coloring this frog and yes I was kind of winging it and no I don't think that this exact frog exists anywhere in the world. Well now he does on this page but he's he doesn't have to be real they don't they don't have to be exact oh I'm just adding more shadows um, and you you can absolutely do the same thing if if you want to redo this one in the book or on a different frog that's perfectly fine if you want to just wing it and do it out of your head more power to you I think that's awesome and if you're a little unsteady look one up and use and use a reference photo it sort of gives you confidence and don't feel bad about it at all in fact that's how you learn it you just keep doing it that's how people learn how to play the guitar or a musical instrument it's almost like muscle memory after a while you get used to doing certain things and it gets stuck in your head in the best way possible so don't feel bad and don't let anybody tell you that it's wrong to use a reference picture because it's how every single artist learns I mean drawing is nothing but a form of copying something if it's if it's not something from your head it's something from a picture or nature and that's perfectly okay Oop, I'm shaking up the Posca pen I'm adding a little bit of highlights to the eye right now to make it look even wetter and weirder. Amphibians are very interesting and very strange critters. I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to I do want to put some white in certain areas on him to make him look a little bit glossy, maybe a little slick, maybe like he just hopped out of the water. I also added some detail, some like little dots and some highlights. I just, I really enjoyed this. I kind of want to do it again and do them in crazy colors like neon pink and purple just for fun. Let me know if you think that would be fun or you've had enough of frogs for now and you want to see something different. I do highly recommend this Posca pen for any highlights. It goes over everything that I've ever used it on so far. So that'll also be linked below. So thank you for joining me once again on this very fun frog drawing afternoon. I hope you're all well out there in this very weird world. And if you have anything that you would like me to me to try or do, let me know. I would always like to hear from you. I love to hear from you all the time. It means so much to me. And I hope you guys are all well out there and staying safe. And here's our, here's our castle art frog. So once again, thank you. I hope you give me a like or a follow and I will see you soon. Talk to y'all later. Look for the links below. Bye.